Welcome to Tech Savvy. My name is Lee Newman and I'm Executive Director of Campus Operations on the LaGrange campus at West Georgia Technical College. And we've been busy out at our college on our campus because we've gone through a rebranding process. We've got new logos, we've got new taglines because technically we're the best. We're enjoying all kinds of fun things going on to, to um, push the new brand and push our new focus and we'd love to show it to you. Come see us anytime. We're also getting excited about um, sp spring semester. So if you're interested in um, enrolling with us in spring semester, you better get on out to the campus or get online and start with the application process. Today we have two very, very good guest stars and I'm really excited about having them on here because I think we have quite a few automobiles run around this area. And you know what? Some of them actually break. And then we've got a lot of people that are interested in old cars and like to, to refurbish them and get them so that they can work again. We have a great automotive instructor. His name's Seth Massey. And he's here with us today. And he's going to give us a little rundown on what all's new and exciting in our, uh, on our campus in our automotive program. And I, we've also got a student that's going to be here on the second block, and he's going to give us the real story <laughs> about what's going on in our automotive department. Seth, thank you for coming today. Thank I know you you've for been on me. here before, and but lots happened since the last time you've a been here. A lot has happened since I've been here last time. So I want to hear, first of all, have we got anything new going on out there? We do. We're actually working on doing some renovations to our lab. There's some walls that need to be taken down and things that need to be moved around in order for us to become NATEF certified. Mm -hmm. uh, NATEF certification is something that a lot of employers look at when they're hiring someone to come work for them if the college they went to is NATEF certified. Mm -hmm. If it's not, they kind of frown upon it. But if, if they are NATEF certified and the students do have their ASC certifications, through the school, then they're like a, a shoe in. Well, who's going to hire them? Dealerships, private shops. Um, dealerships tend to not go by the ASC certifications because they will send you to school, school to learn their, mm -hmm. their brand or whatever. Um, but like private shops and things like that, mom and pop shops mostly would hire someone who graduated from a non-NATEF certified mm -hmm. school. It looks better on your resume. It says I went to a NATEF accredited college. What does NATEF stand for? You put me on the spot here. I think it's um, National. National Automobile Technical um, Education Foundation. Okay. I believe. Don't okay. don't hold me to it. But it's it's like it's the accreditation. Um, for automotive for programs. Automotive. Okay, and so we're working on that. We don't have that now? We don't have that now. We're working on it across all the campuses, all four of the campuses mm -hmm. that have automotive technology. Um, Are I, any of our campuses? I think Carroll campus is. Okay. And well, we have to recertify every five years okay. through NATEF. And do we need to upgrade our equipment? Do, equipment we, needs do you to need be some upgraded. additional training? Um, I do need additional training. All the instructors would need additional training. The equipment would need to be updated, and like I said, renovations would need to happen, mm -hmm. walls taken down, things like that. Just mm -hmm. minor, minor things. But it's important. It's like any other continuing education. We want to make sure we know the latest and greatest things so we're able to teach our Correct. students the latest and greatest Correct. things. And believe it or not, cars change. Yes, they with do. With new they, models. They change every year. And then sometimes during the year right, <laughs> when you right. get recalls yeah. and things yes. like that. Yes. Well, um, this is exciting to know this. I know that, I mean, of course, we do have a manufacturing of, of automobiles in our area. Yes, we do. So we probably have a lot of those particular models. We do. Kia has been gracious enough to donate us um, four vehicles from their manufacturing plant. We have three Optimas and have a Sorento. Mm -hmm. They have donated two Sorentos in the past. One of those is in... Noonan and one of those is in Carrollton. Mm -hmm. And then Douglasville has a Sorrento. Mm -hmm. That's pretty generous. Yes, that's, that's real that. generous. Considering these cars are loaded to the max, navigation, leather interior, heated and air-conditioned front seats. I mean, they are loaded to the gills. But they're, are they programmable to 
tear up or something? I, I go in there and I set faults. I'm actually working on a system now to where there's a panel full of switches and I can go in there and bug, you know, like an ignition coil, like flip a switch and make it to where it doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. And then my students will go in there and diagnose the problem and tell me what's going on with it. And they can look under the hood and physically see that everything is plugged up and operating like it should, but there's a check engine light on, there's a problem in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. So then they have to tell me what they would do to diagnose it and things like that. What, is that what the dealer does now? I mean, like the... Now, well, the dealer, they have um, the computers that they plug up to the cars to check them. And um, Kia has also been gracious enough to donate us two of their factory technician trainers that's big. Yes, that is huge. I mean, just not everybody has access no, to that, no. do they? No, only, only specific Kia dealers have access to those, and they can go in there and we can reprogram fuel maps and things like that with them. It's it's a real, real big plus. That sounds exciting, and they, I, I remember when they came in, I mean, it's only like that size, isn't yeah. it? It's two of them. It's, it's a it's laptop like with all these cables and things like that. And all you do is plug point. it in, it'll tell you what's wrong with it. Plug it in, we go in there, program the car in there, and then it'll tell you what's wrong with it. That is, sounds pretty easy to me. <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> Maybe I ought to go into that. Well, come on, I've been trying to get you to come down there. <laughs> but I would probably, I, I, I could, it would be interesting to me to go, you know, see what all, how it all works. Yeah. Well, back to what we're doing. Um, in class, when a student signs up for your program, first of all, what do you like to like for your student, like what characteristics, what hobbies, what background do you like a student to come in that you know that Honestly, will end up being su su successful? If, if they come in and they have grease under their fingernails or, you know, wearing a greasy ball cap or, you know, greasy blue jeans, that, that is like prime A1 candidate for mm -hmm. automotive because I know they're not afraid to get dirty. I know they're not afraid to get down in there and figure out what the problem is and fix the problem. Mm -hmm. But honestly, I can I can take anyone. Mm -hmm. You know, they can come in not knowing the difference between a flathead and a Phillips head screwdriver, and graduate and become a master tech at a dealership somewhere. Mm -hmm. so, so you start from scratch. If we start is, from scratch. Well, I know the difference between a flathead and a Phillips head screwdriver. And you have a leg up on some of my students. I in the do. Past. I do. I know how to crank up a car too. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, it's so important now to make sure the preventative maintenance part goes on too. And yes. so I'm sure that's probably what is that a big deal? That starts in introduction class. We teach students how to rotate and balance tires, how to change tires, how to do oil changes, you know, things like that. How mm -hmm. to use all the necessary equipment that they will see in the dealership. Mm -hmm. And then as the program goes on, we teach them the difference, you know, in like the electrical side of the brakes versus the mechanical side of the brakes and how mm -hmm. to diagnose and repair those issues. But they're not all, like all models are not built the same. They're not. So and do you have to teach like Lincoln and Ford and well, Chevrolet and they're, Dodge? And they're not all the same, but it's the same Maserati. basic premise. I wish we had it. <laughs> if we could get in with Maserati, that'd be excellent. Maserati, Porsche, because there's a Porsche dealership or a Porsche manufacturing plant in Hateful. So mm -hmm. if we could get in with them, that'd be excellent. Mm -hmm. But it's, they're all different, but they all have the same basic premise. Mm -hmm. You know, you have, like on a brake system, you have rotors and calipers and brake pads, and they're all basically the same. Yes, there's some differences in them, like the different number of pistons in the calipers and how to retract them and things like that. Right. But they get the same basic premise. And that's basically, like you said originally, if you teach them the foundation, when they go to their employer, they'll train them in their specific right. things. Right. But it sure is nice to have them trained in those foundation areas and skills because that the, the dealer won't have to do that. Absolutely. It, it helps them, you know, get a job. If, if you have someone come in, say, to become an instructor, they don't have any previous experience becoming an instructor, they don't have any experience in the field that they want to instruct versus someone who has experience being an instructor and has been in the field for five or ten years. Mm -hmm. You know, you would hire the person that's been in the field for five and ten years and has the experience. Right. I because don't think we'd ever hire that person. That no, no. They wouldn't do us any good. They so. wouldn't. <laughs> because you'd have to train them on how to instruct and then what to instruct. Mm -hmm. So, and we've had, I've had a little, we've had a transition in our curriculum. Mm -hmm. We've changed our curriculum over to a completely new, everything is all 
online and the, the curriculum is amazing. Mm -hmm. I wish I had it when I went through the program. Well, the fact that it's online, that means it changes easily. It does. And there, because there's things updates. do change. Yes. Yeah. The yeah. book, the, the students used to buy eight books and I think they were around $100 a piece, mm. you know, for each one. But now they buy one book and one test sheet manual and I think it totals like $400 and mm -hmm. that runs them through the entire program. Mm -hmm. Intro through engine performance, all nine areas that we cover. Well, that was another question. You've got several certificates that you offer, right? We do. So you can, you're, you can have a degree or a diploma mm -hmm. in it, but then there are a lot of embedded certificates that you add yes. up. So yes. There are six certificates plus the diploma. So when you graduate, you'll have seven pieces of paper. You have mm -hmm. a diploma and then there's an electrical certificate, undercar specialist, transmission specialist, engine repair, engine performance, AC and let's see here. It's okay. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, You've I'm already sure. lost me in the. Yeah. I know about air conditioning, but yeah. um, just briefly, then I was going to ask you too. We're starting to really focus on having some dual enrollment programs. Yes, we are. We uh, the dual enrollment will only be on the Callaway for the Callaway students mm -hmm. because they are viable programs that are on the other campuses. So mm -hmm. we're going to focus on Callaway. Um, how do you see it benefit? I mean, l say we see a junior at Callaway High School. What would you say to him? Say, you know, first of all, what are you interested in? Or I would, I would ask them, you know, because I know they don't have an automotive program out mm -hmm. there. They used to, but they don't anymore. So I would ask them, you know, are you interested in taking automotive? Is it something that you're interested in? Would you like to come out and look around the shop? You know, and once they come out to the shop and look around, then I would sit them in my office and be like, okay, you know, if you want to do the dual enrollment thing, this is how it would work. Doesn't cost a thing. Mm -mm. Junior year, senior year, and then they take one class after they graduate high school mm -hmm. and they're finished with automotive. It's a pretty good deal. So you graduate with a college diploma and a high school diploma. And just, you would only have to pay like tuition and books for one semester. Right. So that would be, that'd be ideal. And then you go, Oh yeah. what's the starting pay? It ranges. Um, if you go to a dealer, say. Go to a dealership. Start and pay is about between nine fifty and eleven fifty an hour. Right. To start out as an oil change technician, mm -hmm. and I, I like to say that I don't get my students jobs their first semester because that gives me a chance to see their work ethic and how they work, and mm -hmm. better I can better place them where they need to. But most of my students now have jobs in the automotive field, and I think I have one student right now who doesn't have a job in automotive. And that, he's still got plenty of time. Yeah, he's got plenty of time because he's, he's an introdu introduction student. So, Well, Seth, thank you for joining me today. Thank We're going to have me. your student next, and I'm going to actually get the real story yeah, out of him. Get the real story out of him. And all right. Will we'll you plan on coming back and keeping us up to date on Absolutely. all your program? Absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. And we'll be back in just a minute to talk to a student about the automotive program at West Georgia Tech. Welcome back to Tech Savvy. We have a great show today because we're talking about the automotive program at West Georgia Tech on the LaGrange campus. You just recently heard a lot from Seth, the instructor, and now we're going to, like I said, find out the real story. This is Ian Daldry, and he is a first semester, right? Yes, ma'am. Student. So you've just been there for maybe six weeks, uh, seven that, weeks. That's about right. Seven weeks. Well, I have to ask, why did you decide to come to West Georgia Tech? Well, because really it's not all that expensive to go out there. I mean, I looked into uh, Wild Tech and uh, what was the name of that other one? Uh, ITT Tech, and it's just way too expensive. And I went out to West Georgia Tech, and it's just, I mean, there's nice people out there, and it's not real expensive, so. Mm -hmm. It's very reasonable for what you're getting, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. It really is. Um, do you live in LaGrange? Yes, ma'am. I live uh, over by the Alabama state line. Oh, okay. All right, near Valley and that area down there? Um, yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, good. Well, we're glad you're a West Georgia Tech student. We're real glad that you came to see us, and I'm glad so far, so good. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you've learned in your automotive program. Well, I mean, I've learned the basics of electrical. I've learned about all the different tools we use, learned how to, uh, you know, tell the difference in what size fuses we need to use. Um, 
Well, like that Seth, like Seth said earlier, I can tell the difference between a Phillips head and a flathead now. No. That's very good. I'm proud of you. Um, what made you decide to go into automotive? You like, I mean, apparently you like to work with cars. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I used to have a '79 C10 pickup, and I fell in love with it. Whenever uh, me and my dad actually had to sit down and swap the 305 we had in it to put a 350 in it. Is that a motor? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I just fell in love after that. So your dad has some experience working on cars. Mm, when you say experience, you mean we never really had the money to take it to a shop, so you did it yourself. Oh, okay. All right. That's the best teacher, though. That's yeah, the, teach yourself. Yeah, teach yourself, and then you learn what not to do, and you learn lessons. And yes, ma'am. You didn't do any of that, though. Did you not make any mistakes, did you? Ooh, well, I can't say that. Uh, <laughs> I can't say that. Well, that's good that you had that experience, and so you've been working on your own automobiles for how many years? Well, me, I've only had my truck for about a year and a half now, mm -hmm. seeing the fact that uh, I'm, I'm only 17, so I've only had my license for about a year and a half. Yeah, you couldn't have it much longer than that, yeah. But I've been working on vehicles uh, probably since I was about 13 years old, 13, 14. Right. So not really that long, but That's good I've time. got a little that, bit. I mean, you haven't had that long a time to have opportunity to work on it because you're That's so true. young. That's so, true. But um, tell me about... I guess what I want to, I want you to tell our viewers is we're talking about now going into the dual enrollment area, and so that would mean high school students could be taking what you're taking now, and it doesn't cost them anything. The books are free, everything except anything that you're going to take with you, like supplies or tools or anything mm -hmm. like that. All of it is free. We're going to be offering it hopefully in at Callaway High School starting in the fall semester. If you had a chance to talk to somebody maybe as a sophomore or a junior now, what would you tell them? Uh, I would tell them if you come out to the school, we have a great teacher. All the guys in the class are real nice guys. You know, they'll help you out if you have a problem. And it's just, it's fun out there. You would learn you, a lot and you have fun. Would you have liked to have that opportunity to yeah. do it in high school? Yes, ma'am. I actually went to uh, LaGrange before I switched schools, and uh, they wouldn't actually let me take the automotive class. Because you're too young? Uh, not that I was too young, it's because I knew too many people in there. Oh. I knew I really would be uh, goofing off instead of learning. Oh, you okay, you were a problem child in it sounds I wouldn't like. say a problem child. <laughs> but you found your way, and now you are focused on your your program and what you want to do when you grow up, and so you're not a, program, a problem child anymore, right? Anymore, okay. Anymore. Yeah, anymore, that sounds about right. <laughs> well, that's your perfect um, perfect example of what we're trying to do for dual enrollment students some a lot of people out there in in high school just don't know what they want to do so they can't find their little niche and so what we're offering them is an opportunity to work with their hands and do things that they want to do and then when they get out of high school they're ready to go mm -hmm. so you're a perfect example of what what we're looking for so we can so we can put you to work as soon as you get out of high school and now of course you're here now and learning um what do you want to do when you finish all your training well what i want to do there's not a whole lot of room for anymore uh -huh. i want to rebuild engines but you know it's a lot cheaper just to buy a crate engine nowadays than it is to rebuild one mm -hmm. but i'm just that's what i want to do i want to rebuild engines you know make race cars oh so you're into the race cars <laughs> yes ma'am so i guess seth's cars that he's showed you probably pretty impressive Ooh. Ooh. they're so loud the yeah, louder the better <laughs> well that's good and a good opportunity for you to look at them and and learn from them um so you want to what well, rebuilding engines to me is a good thing to ha to know how to do because a lot of people can't afford to take their cars to dealers or to the shop and you could help people out that way right oh yes ma'am but that's that knowing how to do that is such valuable information for a future employer of yours because you know what not to do yeah, know what not to do and what to do right and that experience is so valuable so so tell me um what is what are you going to do do you all right, you're in the basics introductory program now right yes ma when do you go to class at uh, night i go to class at night five to ten monday through wednesday okay do you have do you work during the day i work thursday friday saturday where do you work well, I work at a car wash right now. Uh huh. So. You get to be around cars now. Yeah, I get to be around well, cars. That's good. That's good. Well, that's good that you've got something that you're able to do. Um, tell me what you're like. Have you started talking about your next semester and what you're going to be taking next semester? 
Um, I can't remember what classes we have next semester, but I know I'm going to attend. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Um, tell me about the students that you are in class with. Well, uh, there's some goofy ones. There's some nice ones. There's just, there's a whole, there are a bunch of good group of guys. Uh-huh. Older, younger, there's, experienced, not less experienced. There's a couple experienced people in there that are just going in there to, you know, get their certifications. Right. But then there's, you know, people like me that are, you know, just high school kids that just graduated and they want to go through and learn. Mm -hmm. So you have a mix of guys that can help you out and guys that want to learn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about the equipment in the lab? How do you, th what do you think of that? Well, we have everything from a dyno to lifts to an alignment rack. And I mean, there's all kinds of stuff out there. So in your brief time there, you've, you've recognized that we have some really good equipment. Yes, ma'am. And, of course, I think you said something about you weren't real excited about working on Kias. <laughs> no, ma'am. I did not like the Kias at all. Why is that? They're just... Simple? There's two... They're, they're complicated, and there's not oh. a whole lot of room. See, I, I'm a big guy, mm -hmm. so, you know, reaching up in there, it's just real hard. I don't have a whole lot of room, and you have all these sensors that are just aren't necessary. That you think at this yeah, that, point. I, that I don't think are that, necessary. That you know that there might be some more to it as you learn more. As, Okay, around. I cannot. I can say that I don't know everything, but I just feel that they're not necessary. Well, they're there to make sure everything works right. Well, that, that's true, yeah. And if something, I mean, you just don't know what's going to go bad, right? Of course, we have to love Kia because we're glad that they're in now, our Now, I do appreciate them donating the cars. Yeah, just and some, the equipment. And the equipment. And one day you might get to work on Kias. Lord help me. <laughs> <laughs> You'd rather the old motors and the older cars. Yes, ma'am. And, ma and uh, well, I think, you know, of course, they change. Everything changes, and so it's good that, like, Seth has to continue his education to keep up with what the latest and the greatest is, and you probably will do the same if you continue in this career path. Yes, ma'am. Constant. But it's fun to know that we have the latest and the greatest equipment and knowledge and experience to teach our students so they'll be ready to work when they get out, right? Right. Well, tell me again uh, just about your experience at West Georgia Tech. We're excited about you being there. Have you had a good experience, customer service? So far, I've had a great time. I mean, from my other class, I also have to take, you know, Comp 1000 because that's in the program. Mm -hmm. Who's mean, your teacher in that? Miss Beverly. Okay. She's a real nice lady. You know, she'll help you out if you have a problem. But, you know, going through all the classes and, I mean, sure, it could be stressful for a kid just getting out of high school and he's not real prepared for the whole college mm -hmm. thing, but everybody's there to help you out through everything. Well, the Comp 1000, um, that's just, you just have to have that for your program, right? Yes, ma'am. But did you have, you probably had plenty of computer experience before it, hadn't you? Oh, no doubt. All through high school, middle school, mm -hmm. I've had to take computer classes all my life, so it's not a real bad problem. Are you learning more? For the uh, Comp 1000? Uh -huh. Oh, yes, ma'am. I've learned how to use Excel 10 times better than I knew how you to do You didn't know it could do all that, did no, you? No, had no idea. Have you spent any time on Excel? I mean, Access? Access yeah. No, that's, uh, we start that actually next week. Because that's a valuable tool, and a lot of people just dread using that. Because, but it's got a lot of good things that it can do once you learn the process out of it. But you've done the Word and the Ex um, Excel access what else are you going to cover in that program? Uh, we do word powerpoint excel access and um, i can't remember the last one uh, what do you do outlook i guess with outlook the, that's it outlook with the um emails and yes, calendars right. and things like that you know it's it's amazing to me how much experience people have students high school students have on computers but I'm glad that we kind of pull it all together with the comp 1000 because you're going to need those skills as you continue on through your program and then once you get out because you're going to need those skills they'll be valuable to you a lot of people the older students the non-traditional students come back to school and take that and it's a challenge because they haven't had the experience that you had in the high school so it's a good program to have so um well we're about to close up is there anything that if you had an opportunity again to talk to maybe a high school student or even somebody that's graduated from high school would you recommend west georgia tech oh yes ma'am no doubt i'd tell them 100 percent go give it a shot you won't regret it and the fact that you do a lot of hands-on and not that much class time is that 
Is oh, that, that helps you out 100% instead of sitting there staring at a computer trying to figure out how to do it. You're actually out in the shop using a wrench, getting your hands dirty, and mm -hmm. having a good time. You don't mind getting dirty? No, ma'am. Well, that's good. That's good. It sounds like to me you're going to be a really good person in the automotive industry. Well, I'm going to try. I hope so. Well, thank you for joining us today. And will you plan on coming back and keeping us up to date? Oh, yes, ma'am. I on will. On your progress? Yes. Well, thank you so much for being here today. And thank you all for joining us today. It's just another exciting day out at West Georgia Tech. And we look forward to seeing you and hope you'll come out and sign up for some classes. Thanks again for joining us.